All right. Another theme is cloud development for, for .NET 6. Um, no matter what type of cloud app that, that you're building, um, .NET and, and the Azure teams are working to make sure that that is, is covered. Um, and a, a common pattern that's been used for a long time is in-tier. App service has been an absolute dominant cloud service for uh, for interior applications, and you know they're these apps are typically you know pretty simple to build, pretty simple to work with, um, and if the team you know is small, then that's all that's needed, and they're all deployed at once. Uh, ASP.NET has a lot of features that help you build just really beautiful, scalable web applications with this pattern. Another common pattern that is being adopted is microservices. And yeah, it started out with a buzzword and there's some company stories um, where they took the pendulum swing to the other extreme and just had a disastrous microservices rollout. So you, you don't, you don't want to take microservices to the literal meaning of, of the name. Uh, because no application is going to end up being micro. I mean, yes, conceptually, you could have you could have an application that has a single web API, just one endpoint, and that's all it does. But that's not going to be most of what you do. I mean, if you have that, just throw it into an Azure function and and let that be it. But but if um, if you're if you're really looking to microservices as a solution to the problem of an interior application that's gotten too big for its britches and has, has several obvious areas of segmentation, well, then you're gonna be going down the right path. We take a, a code base that has kind of gotten too big. It actually has you know, multiple logical applications that are just searching to come out and be segmented. And each one of those is gonna end up being pretty significant in and of itself. So you end up with multiple interior applications within the software system and and each of those applications if if you're going to follow the the you know autonomous services pattern whether you call it microservices or whether you call it you know the 20 year old name of service oriented architecture the term service um has been overloaded but a, a lot of the people who are pushing the microservices pattern and trying to come up with a definition, which the industry still does not have a good consistent definition that, that's agreed upon. Um, I like to kind of use the common language of an autonomous service or an independent application. And as such, each of these services needs to own its own data. And so if you own your own data, then you're going to own the infrastructure of your data store. And then you might call to another application another service and ask for some of its data. And so when you store data, it's gonna either be data that that application owns or a copy of data that another application owns. But either way, you're kind of, you're, you're creating a development environment that's very similar to your interior application, but now you're just creating multiple of these because you've chosen to divide up a larger software system into smaller pieces so that you could segment your development team or you could segment dependencies uh, or either way, make each individual resulting application easier to manage. And, um, and with, with Azure coming out with Azure container apps, this is gonna, this is gonna help a lot. Um, the dust hasn't settled on Azure container apps. The tooling is still being worked on um, if you need to blow and go right now, you're probably still going to be on Azure App Service, which is drop dead simple Azure App Service with Azure SQL or Azure Storage Account. But keep an eye on Azure Container Apps because those are being designed to scale to zero or scale to idle and go up and down pretty automatically so that you don't have a high Azure bill, but at the same time, you don't get caught by a, um, a usage spike and then get overloaded and have some denial of service because you weren't scaled high enough. Okay, um, Azure, uh, every part of Azure does support .NET 6 right now. You don't have to worry about particular regions not having support for .NET 6. 
Um, if you're using pre-release of .NET 7, you do have to worry about that because um, that's not the case. So um, .NET 6 is basically supported everywhere. Um, Azure Pipelines is keeping up, GitHub Actions is keeping up, and every service in Azure is keeping up. So you don't have to worry about that. 